Chapter 3 of The Three Little Kittens. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mike Stanish. Three Little Kittens by Catherine Pyle. Three. Jasbury, I've found a fresh mouse hole, said Aunt Tabby one day. It's in the cupboard under the sink, and the cook has left the door open. Come with me and I'll show it to you. I have great hopes the mouse may come out before very long, and if you sit there and watch, you may catch him. Aunt Tabby, oh, I don't want to watch the mouse holes today, mewed Jasbury. I told Fluffy I would come out and play with him. Mayn't I, Mother? I said I would, and I don't want to sit in the cupboard and watch. Maybe the mouse wouldn't come out anyway, and Fluffy expects me. You always have some excuse, Jasbury said his aunt severely if you had your way you would never do anything but play but as long as you have to learn to mouse some time i don't see why to-day isn't as good a time to begin as any yes jasbury go with your aunt said his mother and don't look sulky i'm sure you ought to be very grateful to her for telling you about the hole but i don't want to sit in the cupboard all morning I, and i can find holes too I found one out in the shed yesterday, a big, big one. I'd rather watch that one if I have to watch any. Oh, very well, said his aunt. You may do as you please about it, but I think you'd be much more likely to catch a mouse in the cupboard. I'd rather watch it in the shed. His mother, too, said he might do as he chose about it, but neither she nor Aunt Tabby had much hopes he would catch anything. I'll have to go out and tell Fluffy I can't play this morning, said Jasbury. Don't be long, said his mother. Come straight back as soon as you've told him. Jasbury promised he would, and then ran out into the kitchen and mute for the cook to open the outside door for him. Bother those cats, scolded the cook. It takes all my time letting them in and out. She left the soup she was stirring and came over and opened the door, and the kitten ran past her out into the sunny yard. Fluffy was sitting on the top step of the ladder, looking over the fence and waiting for him. I can't come out to play with you now. I have to catch a mouse for Mother and Aunt Tabby. Fluffy was much interested. Where are you going to catch it? he asked. In the shed. I found the hole myself. It's a big, big, big hole. I guess the biggest mouse you ever saw lives in it. I guess you'd be scared if you tried to catch a mouse as big as that one, wouldn't you? Maybe I would, and maybe I wouldn't. I know you would. I've got some big mice, too, said Fluffy. Not as big as this one, though. I'll show him to you after I catch him. Jasbury ran back and mute for the cook to open the door again. The cook was so angry she would not open it for quite a while, but Jasbury mute so loudly that at last she was obliged to for the sake of peace. When she did open it, she cried scat at him and pushed out her foot at him as he ran past her jasper did not mind that he hurried past her and out into the shed the door of which was luckily open the hole he had found was down back of a bench and some unused buckets were piled up in front of it jasper crouched down in the shadow of the buckets he crouched there for a long time without moving and with his eyes fixed patiently on the hole aunt tabby would have been pleased and surprised if she could have seen how still he kept after a while however he began to feel discouraged he wondered whether there were any mouse there after all maybe aunt tabby was right and he should have watched in the cupboard just as he was thinking this he heard a scratching rushing sound inside the hole and a gray head with a pointed nose and two gleaming round black eyes appeared at the mouth of the hole jasbury quivered all over as he crouched still lower and made ready to leap upon the mouse then suddenly he stiffened and stared with big eyes surely no mouse had ever had such a big head as this after the head followed a great fat body and a long 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 tail the mouse was not a mouse at all but a huge gray rat jasbury was terrified his tail grew big and every separate hair stood on end the rat looked at him with a wicked grin. Ho, ho! So you thought you'd catch me, did you? cried the rat. I knew you were there. I heard you and I smelled you. You thought you'd catch me, did you? Well, here I am. Now let's see you catch me. The rat sidled over toward Jasbury 
and just as fast as he sidled over Chesbury backed away. He tried to spit and growl, but he was too frightened. Thought you'd catch me. Maybe I'll catch you. I like little kittens for supper. Like em as much as cheese. He gave a heavy jump toward Jasbury, and his sharp teeth showed a, in a wicked grin. Mama, Mama, and Tabby, come quick, mewed Jasbury shrilly. Suddenly the rat started. His eyes glared past Jasbury toward the kitchen door. A look of terror came over his face. He wheeled about and scuttled back towards his hole. At the same moment there was an angry growl, and a gray shape shot past Jasbury. It was Aunt Tabby. She had heard Jasbury's cry of distress and flown to help him. She rushed at the rat and made a wild grab at him, but he was too quick for her. Already he was disappearing in his hole. She did catch his tail, but it slipped away from her, and at the last moment the rat was gone. Jasbury began to mew pitifully. "'Why, Jasbury, what are you crying about now? You're all safe,' said his aunt. "'Mew, mew, mew. Oh, he frightened me so. I never knew there were mouses like that.' mouse that wasn't a mouse kitten that was a rat and a very big and savage rat too no wonder you were frightened you'll have to be a bigger kitten before you can grapple with a rat i've been trying to have a chance at him myself but i've never seen him till today he always stays hidden when i'm around aunt tabby talked on comforting the kitten until at last he stopped trembling and his hairs smoothed themselves down into the usual smoothness now, Jasbury, perhaps you'll watch one of my mouse holes, she ended. I promise you nothing but mice ever comes out of it. Very well, and thank you, Aunt Daddy, said Jasbury meekly. And he followed her back from the shed into the kitchen, wondering what he would say to Fluffy when he saw him again, and how he could explain not having caught anything after all. However, he need not have been troubled. Fluffy was such a gentle little kitten that he never would tease or make fun of anyone, no matter what they did or didn't do. End of chapter 3